God morning, kids. It's time to pray. Man, is it time to pray. And the air is out. Here's the verses we're going to read. Okay, uh, these next two are very difficult for me. I've actually put this off as long as I can. We're speaking about the womb, the mother's womb, today and tomorrow. <clears throat> today is about miscarriage and abortion. Um, Dale Carnegie wrote a book about how to win friends and influence people. <laughs> so I might gain some enemies on this. It is what it is. I have to speak to people that lost a child and people that gave up a child. Um, people that lost, I, I know people that have, had, that have had five miscarriages. How hard and how horrible is that? Um, I know people that have had abortions and regret it. I have parents that have forced their kids to have an abortion. Um, I know people that have had abortions, multiple ones, and it's not a big deal. But I need to cover both, right? For those mourning the loss of a child they wanted and those mourning the loss of a child that they couldn't keep. And then those that said, hey, I don't want a kid. I'm going to school or I don't want to lose my job or I don't think I like that guy. And they uh, terminated the pregnancy. Let's look at what the Bible says about, um, I got to take a drink, about um, the child in the womb. We've all heard the phrase, eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. Jesus said it. Um, I think you'd be surprised to find out that a lot of the stuff Jesus said, he's repeating from the Old Testament. Um, but an eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, Jesus said it. But it, this is a thing called first mention. When was the first time it was mentioned in the Bible? It was mentioned in the second book in the Bible. Eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, life for life. I'm going to read it. And it has to do with causing the miscarriage of a child. You cause the death of a child, you die. I'm going to read some commentary on that one too. Okay, let's check this out. Exodus 21, 22 through 24. If men who are fighting hit a pregnant woman and she gives birth prematurely, but there is no serious injury, the offender must be fined whatever the woman's husband demands and the courts allow. But if there is serious injury, you are to take life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, bruise for bruise. Let's listen to the commentary. Okay. In addition to the protection of living persons, God required the protection of the unborn children. Verse one refer, or yeah, <clears throat> uh, verse twenty-one refers to a woman giving birth prematurely because of violence done to her. We know miscarriages happen because of violence and accidents. If birth took place, the one causing the premature birth had to pay a fine. If there was serious injury to the mother or the child, then the offending party had to pay according to the law of retaliation. Watch this. Note that if death resulted to the mother or the child, then the perpetrator was found guilty of murder and had to pay with his life. In other words, the unborn child is viewed here as a human being. The fetus's death is considered murder. Watch this note. This is critical. This is what God says about a baby in the womb. Note that this is the only instance in the law where accidental manslaughter called for the death penalty. The principle is clear. God seeks to protect those who are least able to protect themselves, the unborn. It's the only time ever mentioned that if you accidentally killed somebody, you go down for murder. And the only time God says that is when you cause the death of an unborn child. 
not even if, if, if you accidentally killed a three-year-old, there's no death penalty. In the womb, death penalty. Do not think for a moment that uh, God is okay with it or understands. And if you miscarried, or again, if you made that choice uh, against your will and you had to, um, I don't condone it, but um, that baby's born. When it's conceived, it's alive. It has a soul and a spirit, and God has that baby. Okay, Psalms 139, 13 through 16. For you created me in my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I love that. I know full well that your works are wonderful. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body, my unformed body. How young does a fetus have to be to have an unformed body? That's very young, all right? We're talking days. <laughs> <clears throat> Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of my days came to be. God had the whole life planned out, right? Before conception. <coughs> I want to say this. <clears throat> when he says, when I was made in the depths of the earth, Adam was made from the dust. And so they'll refer back to that sometimes. Um, Isaiah 49.1, this is real simple. Listen to me, you islands, and hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born, the Lord called me. From my birth, he made mention of me. Jeremiah 1, 4 through 5. The word of the Lord came to me, right? Uh, all, everything in the Bible is true and real, but this is God saying this. The, Jeremiah saying what God had said, repeating it. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Now, Mother Mary and Elizabeth, her cousin, Elizabeth gave birth to John the Baptist. Check this out. Luke 1, 39 through 45, Mary went to visit Elizabeth. They were both pregnant. Elizabeth was pregnant with John. Mary was pregnant with Jesus. Their pregnancies were three months apart. Elizabeth was about six months. Mary with Jesus was about three months. We do know in the scriptures, it's too much to read, that Mary stayed for three months with Elizabeth. So it's possible that she stayed to see the birth of John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> now we have Jesus Christ in the womb, but this isn't nothing magical. This isn't nothing that God did out of the ordinary. This is what happens. All right, Luke 139, one, chapter 1, 39 through 45. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, jumped. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of the Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Let me say a quick prayer, a little more talk, and then we'll pray again. Lord God Almighty, we know that before conception you have a plan for us and all the babies we've lost, some intentional, some unintentional, you have them all. We know, Lord, that their names are written in your book of life and we know that at conception it is a human being. It is a child with a soul and a spirit. Give comfort to those who lost a child they wanted to keep. Lord, I pray that you give them peace and understanding 
that their child is safely with you. For those that were forced into abortion, and I mean forced, not given a bad choice, forced, Lord, bless them with peace and comfort, knowing full well that you have that child. For those that made choices and regret it, Lord God, I pray that you bring healing. Bring healing, bring comfort, bring peace to their heart knowing that you have that child. In Jesus' name, amen. Full disclosure. Wow, it's getting late. Full disclosure. I am responsible for three abortions. Now, I'm not a woman, but I don't want you to think he doesn't know. Um, I didn't know about these three. Um, one, I was a young kid. I was probably 13 when she got pregnant. Long story. Um, and I found out four years later, some guy told the girl I was dating that, uh, this other girl had an abortion. So it was four years later that I even knew she was pregnant. Um, another one was a one night stand and, uh, I lost the girl's number and about three months later I found it and I called her and, um, her mother said, Glenn, don't ever call here again. I just got back from taking my daughter to the abortion clinic. The third one, I found out about three years later. Um, you know, talking to the girl and she said, I had an abortion three years ago. Let me say this. If you're drunk driving and you kill somebody, it's murder. Um, did I know, not know about the abortions when I was... 13 and a half, 14 years old, what was I going to do? I don't know. I wasn't there. I didn't have to make the choice. The one night stand, was I going to marry her and live happily forever? I don't know. I wasn't there to make the choice. The other one, um, was I, I, that one's different. I can't get into it, but, uh, I wasn't there to make the choice. It does not make me less guilty. It does not make the pain of lost children less. So to the degree that I can, I know how you feel. Um, <clears throat> I just want you to know, if you lost a child you wanted, Jesus has that baby. Jesus has that baby. Heaven doesn't tell us how old we are, but heaven never mentions children. The Bible never mentions children in heaven. And we won't age. We assume, based on some scriptures and a whole lot of conjecture, we assume that we'll all be somewhere between 28 and 35. So your children are up there as adults, uh, loving God and uh, being in heaven. I pray for peace for those that lost a child they wanted. I pray for peace for those that had to lose a child that they wanted. I pray for peace for those that made a choice they now regret. Jesus has them babies. He's got them. He's got them. It doesn't make it okay to go out and just have an abortion whenever you feel like it. But Jesus has them babies. Lord God Almighty. Lord, we also have to talk about people that have given their children up for adoption, that birthed them, then gave them up for adoption. God bless those people that said, I will not have an abortion, but I cannot keep this baby. I will give this baby life, but I cannot keep it. A special blessing on you ladies. And for those of us that have been adopted, not me, but for those of us who have been adopted, oh Lord, if our parents are still alive, whether we know them or not, bless them for giving us life, for saying, I will not destroy this baby. I will give this baby life. Lord God Almighty, I pray for peace on all these people. Men, women, children, we're all hurting. Parents force children to have abortions 
we might even be the parent that forced our child to have abortion. It makes talking to our children difficult. It, take, it makes loving our mother and father difficult. Lord, there is an awesome opportunity for you to heal in many areas of our lives. And I pray that you bring the healing down. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, that we can go to the throne of grace boldly where we will receive mercy. If we confess our sin, we will be forgiven. We thank you, Lord, that by confessing these sins against you and the unborn, ourselves and others, that you forgive us, that we always receive mercy. And today, Lord, we ask that you pour down healing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Make a great day, kids.